Hello, good evening. Uh, this is um, the <clears throat> Illinois ACAC. Um, this is the Illinois ACAC 656 College Fair. Um, trying to work my screen around, folks. Sorry about that. Um, I think I've got it. Sorry for this technical glitch, my, my bad. Okay. College reps, can you see the IACAC virtual college fair screens? Perfect. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thanks for being patient with, uh, with some technology here. My name is Earl, the StripeScan facilitator, and I'm going to welcome you to the IACAC virtual college fair, the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling virtual college fair. Um, you are in session A1, um, where you will hear from six colleges tonight, the University of Michigan, the University of West Virginia, Rockford University, the University of New Mexico, Texas Tech University, and the University of Oregon. Um, a few housekeeping reminders for everyone um, that's listening in to this webinar. Um, how do you communicate with colleges? Um, that would be through our Q&A function. Um, in your toolbar, you can uh, use that Q&A and direct your questions directly to each of the colleges uh, or the college rep specifically. You will see their names within their Zoom uh, square box there. Um, and so if you have a question specifically for a school, you may address that question to that school uh, at any point in time, um, not just when that school is speaking. Um, uh, your camera and the microphone on your end as the audience are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, I do want to remind you that um, uh, you can sign up for more sessions at strivescan.com backslash Illinois, um, and you will find uh, this particular day and tomorrow's event on there as well. And um, also we are recording this session and when um, we finish up today, you will get a, a copy of this recording at the link where you registered for this particular session. Okay, so um, excellent. So as I said, um, in the top corner um, is our session box, the University of Michigan. Uh, Megan and Rachel will tag team that session. Uh, Madeline will present uh, to you from the University from West Virginia University. Um, Elizabeth from Rockford University. Uh, Priscilla and Ashlyn from the University of New Mexico, April from Texas Tech University, and Sarah from the University of Oregon. So um, I believe that's all I have as your facilitator. Um, I will be watching in the background, but other than that, I'm going to hand it off to Rachel from the University of Michigan. Uh, and folks, again, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Um, have a great session and I will see everybody back uh, after the University of Oregon presents for our closing remarks. Thanks so much. Okay, hello everyone and greetings from the University of Michigan. My name is Megan Lakatis and I serve as the Illinois Regional Admissions Recruitment Coordinator within the U of M Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Alongside me tonight is my colleague and fellow admissions counselor, Rachel Taylor, who will be helping with the chat and providing you with some helpful links along the way. Together, Rachel and I both recruit and support Illinois students considering a Michigan education, and we both happen to be U of M alumni, so we are excited to share a bit about the Michigan experience from both the admissions counselor perspective and the student perspective with you tonight. When introducing students to the University of Michigan, we first like to reflect on the, our past as an institution, where we are today, and where we see ourselves going in the future. So, I would first like to acknowledge the, that the University of Michigan resides upon the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabe pe people. In 1817, the Ojibwe, Adawa, and Potawatomi nations made the largest single land transfer to the University of Michigan, seated through the Treaty of Fort Meigs. 
so that their children could be educated. With, we recognize the history of displacement of Native communities and facilitate the founding of the University of Michigan. We also acknowledge the sovereignty of tribal lands, and we reaffirm contemporary and ancestral Anishinaabe ties to the land, as well as the profound contributions of Native Americans to this institution. Just as we acknowledge the ancestry of the land on which we live, I also feel very compelled to speak to both the reality and serious impacts of racial injustice in our country. Black Lives Matter, and we acknowledge the active role our university must play in the conversation around these injustices and in forging a path towards po positive change. Our efforts at Michigan begin with fostering a diverse, equitable, and inclusive community for our students, faculty, and staff here on campus. Recognizing that U of M is still a majority white institution, we have an ongoing focus spearheaded by our DEI office on improving our climate of diversity to be supportive of all. We will share some resources in the chat now, including some of our campus schools and student offices, and we invite all to participate in this month's Black History events hosted by the U of M Multi-Ethnic Student Affairs Office. U of M is a large public research institution located in Southeast Michigan in Ann Arbor. Consistently ranked as one of the best college towns in the U.S., Ann Arbor is about a four and a half hour drive away from Chicago. Together, U of M and Ann Arbor provide that quintessential college town experience with over 300 different restaurants to explore, NCAA Division I big, big Ten athletic events to attend, and a very spirited campus community that attracts students from all 50 states and over 100 different countries. In fact, on our campus, Illinois is consistently ranked as one of the most popular states for our students to hail from. I also like to share that beyond geographic diversity, our students do identify with a diversity of backgrounds, races, religions, cultures, and educational interests. In fact, 14% of our students identify as the first in their family to attend college. 18% of our students are Pell eligible. 27% self-identify as students of color, and 17% identify as part of the LGBTQ plus community. Our vibrant campus community, coupled with the opportunity to learn al alongside your peers, really enhances your Michigan experience and prepares you for a lifetime of working, living, and collaborating for others to come. At Michigan, our students pursue over 280 undergraduate degree programs, 70% of which are ranked in the top 10 nationally, and over 90% are ranked in the top 20. So whatever you're thinking about studying, you're going to have highly ranked opportunities available to you on our campus. Some popular majors include pre-law and pre-health pathways, the College of Engineering, the Ross Bachelor's of Business Administration degree, nursing, musical theater, communication studies, that's what I studied, political science, and so much more. Many students are also really pleasantly surprised to find that our student to faculty ratio is just 15 to one, and only about 7% of our classes have 100 or more students within them. Outside of the classroom, students participate in a robust array of extracurricular activities, including Michigan learning communities, identity-based theme communities, over 1,600 different student organizations, like the Michigan Daily, Future Black Healthcare Professionals, La Casa, Dance Marathon, Student Government, or Fraternity and Sorority Life, and a multitude of university support services, like the First Generation Student Gateway or the Comprehensive Studies Program. U of M is also recognized as the number one public research institution in the U.S., with over 1,300 undergraduate students participating in research each year. And every year we invest over $1.5 billion towards research initiatives. So even as early as your first year on campus, you could engage in research. Becoming a U of M student really does unlock a lifetime of potential that stays with you well beyond your years in Ann Arbor as more than 630,000 living alumni around the world provide a valuable personal and professional network for our Michigan graduates. This community is at the heart of the Michigan experience, and we need emerging leaders who want to create positive change in their communities and bring innovative ideas from their own diverse experiences and backgrounds. Through our holistic application review process, we aim to get to know the whole you. To do so, we consider your academic strengths and rigor of your curriculum within your high school environment, extracurricular involvement that shows that you'll positively contribute to the U of M campus community, one teacher's letter of recommendation that speaks to your character and, and engagement within your high school, and essays that provide insight to the person that you are and your overall interest in the University of Michigan. We also know that this past year has presented many unprecedented challenges, and we have adjusted our application process in several important ways to support the class of 2021. More details are to come for the class of 2022, and we do encourage you to take a look at our virtual admissions resources and our website for more about those opportunities. 
I hope that today's information was just a quick overview. We're happy to help answer some questions during today's chat. And now I will pass it on to my colleagues from West Virginia University. Thank you and go blue. Great, thank you, Rachel. Um, and as I restart my clock here. So up next will be uh, Madeline from West Virginia University. Madeline, I'm gonna give you the screen. Great, thank you so much. Hello everyone and welcome to West Virginia University. My name is Madeline Ryan and I am the regional recruiter. Um, I recruit students from Illinois, so I'm happy to connect with you this evening. So the West Virginia University system has three distinct campuses across the state of West Virginia. So we actually have separate admissions offices, different admissions counselors at each of the campuses, different majors um, are offered and different campus environments. So we do really encourage you to connect with each of the campuses to learn a little bit more. We have our West Virginia University Institute of Technology in Beckley, West Virginia. So this is a really great campus for students who want competitive engineering programs, want to work within the STEM field, but do want a smaller campus um, community, smaller than our Morgantown campus with about 1,800 students there. Then we have our West Virginia University Potomac State College in Kaiser, West Virginia. It's actually the smallest of the three campuses with about 1,300 students. And it's great for students who want to earn either a two-year or four-year degree program. Um, and they can consider 60 different majors. And then we have our flagship campus in Morgantown. So we have um, just about 27,000 students with over 300 and different, 380 different majors at the undergraduate, graduate, and professional levels. So now I'll speak to you a little bit more about Morgantown. So where is this campus located? We are actually in North Central West Virginia. So if you're gonna be flying to campus, you'll wanna fly um, into Pittsburgh. And then it's just a beautiful drive, 70 miles south into Morgantown and about seven and a half hours if you're coming from Chicago, if you're gonna be driving from Chicago. So our surrounding, our location um, in the mountains, surrounded by rivers, really offers great opportunities for camping, canoeing, hiking, whitewater rafting through our Adventure West Virginia program. Um, and then we also have something going on on campus all the time. So we say Morgantown really is a uh, college campus, college town, but has a small city feel. We have about 30,000 students. Um, faculty and staff, and then about 30,000 Morgantown residents. So about 60,000 during the, an academic year. Um, and you can often find our students participating in one of 485 student organizations or out there on the field um, cheering on our student athletes to participate in 18 NCAA sports um, in the Big 12 Conference. So there usually is something going on. Also, we have our College of Creative Arts offering some great programming for our students as well. So who are our students? Who are the students coming to Morgantown? As I mentioned, we have about 27,000 students. They come from all 50 states and 118 different countries. Um, we're actually majority non-residents. So most of our, about 55% of our students are coming from outside of West Virginia. And even though I mentioned that we are pretty large, um, we do still have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio, which allows for students to really get to know their professors, get to know their classmates. We're proud to note that we are one of 130 institutions categorized as an R1 research institution. So students are getting involved in research in both the STEM and non-STEM fields as early as the summer before their freshman year. And additionally, um, experiential learning is important to us. So we have our students participating in internships with some of the top Fortune 500 companies. Um, you can study abroad in over 50 different countries. You can earn 1100 hours of clinicals right there on campus with our Ruben Memorial Hospital, a level one trauma center. So um, we really want to help you learn outside of the traditional um, classroom environment. And then we do have 14 schools and colleges across campus. So our students can choose to apply to be considered for one of these schools and colleges as an incoming freshman, or they can come in as undecided and work with our advisors. And a good majority of our students will double major or add on a minor. So some of our unique majors that we like to highlight, we, are, we have one of the top forensic science programs in the country and the largest crime scene training complex. So our students often get to intern with the FBI and then they are one of our top employers. 
We are one of several institutions with a petroleum and natural gas engineering major at both undergraduate and graduate level. And a lot of our alumni in Houston really enjoy working with our students, um, helping them connect to the industry. Our three plus three law program is gaining a lot of attention as well. Um, we have several majors within this program where students can actually begin to, um, well, they can earn their uh, bachelor's and their law degree within six years. So about a year ahead of their peers at other institutions. And we're just three hours away from Washington DC. So great opportunities for clerkships. Um, at the bottom, we have our sports science and media majors. So again, students get to work with our student athletes, their management staff, their training staff um, at the division one level. Um, you can work with our student newspaper. Uh, maybe you wanna be a videographer or a photographer. And our fashion dress and merchandising major um, is allowing students to work within some of the fashion capitals of the world, Paris, Milan, and Tokyo. So now I'll talk to you a little bit more about West Virginia University and our Morgantown campus specifically. So if you're interested in applying, you can actually apply using our online application or the Common App. We don't have a preference for either. So we have a rolling admissions review process. Once we have all of your materials, um, uh, we've received all of your materials, we're able to give you an admissions decision within four to six weeks. So we are not a holistic review institution. Um, so we're going to be looking at your GPA and or your test score um, for admission. Um, some of the majors will require specific uh, GPA or test score. You can find a little bit more on our admissions website. We have adopted a test optional policy as well. And we're looking to extend that beyond um, this uh, academic year. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more, you can go to admissions.wvu.edu slash visit. We have virtual programming and on-campus visit opportunities. So thank you so much for connecting. I'll stay after for the Q&A. Um, once again, my name is Madeline Ryan and I'm your admissions counselor. Great, thank you, Madeline. Um, so just a couple of reminders before um, we hear from uh, Rockford University and Miss Elizabeth. Um, so keep those questions coming. Um, you, again, do not have to wait until you hear from the university to pose those questions, um, knowing who the lineup is in front of you. Um, I see them in the Q&A box and it's great that uh, they're getting answered by our reps. Um, please have that coming and again, um, continue looking for more StriveScan events to sign up for here in uh, uh, the coming hours and tomorrow. So, all right, without further ado, um, Rockford University and Elizabeth, off you go. Hi everyone, my name is Liz. Um, I'm a senior admissions counselor here at Rockford University. Um, just wanted to talk to you guys today. Uh, the first thing I wanted to introduce you to our campus. Um, we are located in Northern Illinois in the third largest city in um, Illinois, Rockford. Um, we are centrally located on about 150 acres. Um, so we have a park-like setting on campus. We are in the middle of the city, um, but we don't have any major roads or anything coming through there. So it's really just our campus tucked back on our little area. Um, we have about 10 residence halls on campus for you to live on campus. We do have about two thirds commuters um, within the Rockford area, but we really are focused on um, all of our students and that being some residents as well. Um, we do have free parking and free laundry on campus, so you don't need to hoard any of your quarters um, leading up to your freshman year. Um, we have about 1300 students on campus um, from around the country and even about 100 um, residents from um, around the world. So we are a little bit different than some of the universities that I've already presented today. Um, we are small compared to them. We are a small liberal arts school. Um, we have about a 10 to one student to faculty ratio, um, which generally means your classes are gonna be around the 20 to 25 range. Um, we do have a few um, lecture halls on campus, but you're not going to see those bigger um, lecture hall numbers. So um, we are around that 20 to 25 range. We do have 12 D3 athletic programs um, and we do have a competitive esports team as well. Um, some big resources that we have on our campus that we really focus on personalizing um, our students' experiences. So we do have our Center for Learning Strategies, um, which has our tutoring center in it. Um, we do have a writing center to help with any um, 
extra information that you guys would need. Uh, we do have our career services. Link Health is for um, you know any of anything that you need on campus, such as like nurse, doctor, prescription, stuff like that. Um, we do have a ton of study abroad options as well, and we do have what's called a student opportunity fund, um, which is a really unique thing on campus so that students can apply for extra resources. So if you wanted to go into Chicago or if you wanted to go up to Milwaukee um, and see extra things um, and add to your education, you can apply for extra funding um, through our student opportunity fund to be able to support that. Um, we do have over 80 major minors and concentrations on our campus. Um, so a few big majors are going to be our business our Peary School of Business, our nursing program, um, our exercise science program, and our performing arts program. Um, from there, just kind of going into the admission requirements for Rockford University, we generally like to see a 2.65 GPA. Um, we also have rolling admissions, so we are able to take and accept applications um, all the way up until classes start in the fall. Our application is free, and we do like to look at a holistic assessment of every student. So we want to know you as a person, just like when we want to add you to our community in, at Rockford University, we want to know who you are and what you like to do um, to make sure that we're the correct fit for you. Um, in addition to that, some important information that I think is very um, important to bring up is just our tuition costs in our room and board. 99% um, of our students do receive financial aid, and we do like to obviously say that small scholarships do add up. Um, we are a private school, um, so financial aid looks a little bit different. Um, than some of the public school financial aid packages, but um, we do wanna bring this number up front and we wanna let you know that every student does get an academic scholarship when they apply and get admitted to Rockford University. So some information about um, Rockford, Illinois and where you're kind of located and where you can go from there. Um, we are one of the largest cities in Illinois. We're about 90 miles from Chicago, Madison and Milwaukee. Um, we do have a semi-pro hockey team um, the ice hogs that are in Rockford. Um, we do also have a ton of restaurants, theaters, coffee shops. So there's a bunch of things to do, not only um, within the city of Rockford, but definitely very close by since we are centrally located um, within all those major cities for you guys. Um, so anything um, that you guys need from Rockford University. Um, my name is Elizabeth Nardi again. I'm one of the senior admission counselors here. Um, so feel free to reach out to us if you have any additional questions. All right, great, thanks Liz, I uh, appreciate it. Um, again, keep the questions coming um, for our uh, audience uh, who's listening in, uh, hang tight at the very end um, as uh, we've got some closing remarks uh, from all of our college representatives. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna um, hand it off to Priscilla and Ashlyn from the University of New Mexico. Off you go, ladies. Awesome, thank you so much. So let me go ahead. Sorry, I don't know why I'm having a little bit of a hard time sharing the presentation here. Sorry about that. Um, sorry, technical difficulties here. All right, well, that's okay. I'm gonna try to see if I could do it um, this way. So hi guys, my name is Priscilla, my student recruitment specialist at UNM. So why should is UNM. If you guys are looking for adventure, innovation, that's a box type of thinking, and most importantly, a place where you guys can truly be yourselves, then UNM is just what you need. UNM is located in beautiful Albuquerque, New Mexico, not to be confused with my parents' birthplace, Mexico. Here you can do quite a bit of things. You can go skiing, hiking, biking, water rafting, and be one of the world's largest hot air room fiesta. If you're not much of an outdoorsy person, that's okay. We also have something for you. Here in our downtown area, you're gonna find a great nightlife. We also have a bunch of concerts throughout the year and we have a hundred art plus galleries around the area. You're not too much convinced about Albuquerque quite yet, just as Hollywood. That's right, Hollywood. Here we have filmed quite a bit of movies. We've done Adventures, Transformers, Breaking Bad and the list goes on. 
Speaking about movies, UNM does offer a really great filming program and right next to our filming studio is Netflix. And um, movies is not the only thing UNM has to offer. We actually have over 200 degree programs as you guys can see from the screen. We have different programs such as engineering, business, architecture, business, law, medicine, just to name a couple. And UNM is also a tier one research university, meaning that we like to do a lot of research here on campus. But what I love about our research is that we're not just kind of writing down papers and submitting them. We actually want to create an impact on the world. For example, we're currently working on a vaccination that will help or prevent Alzheimer's disease. To me, that really goes to show you the type of impact we want to create. And all of you guys can be a part of that type of research. All you have to do is go through a research match program. You're going to create a profile and then we'll match you to any potential research that is currently going on on campus. Right here at UNM, we don't want you just to learn from us. We actually want you to go out there and explore the world. We are partnered with 150 institutions all over the world. That means you could go study anywhere you can think of, Spain, China, Italy, you name it. The best part would be that you would be paying UNM tuition and you can also take any scholarships or financial with you as you go study abroad. If you're like, I don't know, Priscilla, that might be a little bit too far for me. Don't worry, we're also partnered with 160 institutions here in the US. So that means you can go somewhere like New York, LA, Miami, even Hawaii for a semester or two, and then come back and tell us all about it. So it's like getting two universities for the price of one. So go out there, go meet new chicos and chicas, and then come back and tell us all about those wonderful experiences you had. Once you become a part of VNM, you definitely wanna have some fun on campus. And one way in which you could do that is through our student clubs and organizations. We do have over 100 of them. We have everything ranging from political all the way to religious organizations. And then of course we have your traditional sororities and fraternities. We also have a bunch of concerts throughout the year, karaoke nights, pool tables on campus, museums, art galleries. And if you really wanna get ready, you definitely wanna attend one of our athletic events. We are a division one and as students, you all get the great benefit of having all the athletic events be free of charge. So make sure you do come out and support all our teams. So I know right about now, quite of you might be saying that's really great facility, but it must cost a bunch of money to attend UNM. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. UNM really does offer a great education at a very affordable price. So let's go ahead and take a look at those costs. So for non-residents, you're looking about $24,000 a year, room and board, that number can fluctuate depending on where you think about living on campus. Books and supplies, that number also fluctuates depending on where you think about purchasing your books and supplies. When I went to college, I was able to find really good websites where I saved myself some money on those books. And then transportation, this can also fluctuate depending on if you have a car or if you're planning to bring your car on, camp your car on campus. And then miscellaneous, this is any personal expenses like shampoo, deodorant, anything like that. So again, that can vary per student. The good news though, is that we do offer really great scholarships that can help you reduce those costs. So let's go ahead and take a look at those scholarships. These might change a little bit by the time you're a senior, but just to give you an idea, we do have the Regents, which is what we like to call full right scholarship. It would give you about $19,000 a year. The scholarship would cover your tuition fees and housing. You do have to apply for the scholarship, but as you can see, it's definitely worth the application process. We also have the Amigo, which is a tuition waiver. And this um, tuition waiver will allow you to pay in-state tuition, and you would also get a $200 stipend. For this one, you wouldn't have to apply. All you have to do is meet the eligibility criteria and get a mini to m before the deadline. And since you guys are from Florida, we'll go ahead and skip right through that one. We also have the WE and the Louis Plus. The WE and the Louis is the same thing, except the WE covers the Western states and then the Louis covers the other states. So the WE and the Louis Plus are also tuition waivers. So again, instead of paying as an out-of-state resident, you'll be paying as an in-state resident if you get the scholarship. There's no application for this, just as long as you meet the eligibility criteria and you get admitted to UNM before that deadline. The WE and the Louis, this is a deduction. So instead of paying as a, um, the full out-of-state tuition, you would pay 1.5 times in-state tuition, which would be about half of what you would be paying as, you, as if you were paying um, your full at a state uh, tuition. So it's usually about half of that. And then another good way to save up on money is through the Love Wayne Tuition Initiative. Through this initiative, we're allowing our students to have their last semester free of tuition if you're able to graduate from UNM in four years. So again, graduate from UNM in four years, that last semester is completely free. This can definitely save you quite a bit of money, quite a bit of time, and it's a great incentive to graduate on time. And then of course, you guys are pretty familiar with FAFSA for Right Urbana. This is also a really great way to save up on money. So how can you get into UNM? Super easy PC. All we need is your application. You can apply online at apply.unm.edu. 
If you select the pay later option once you're a senior and you send me an email, I'll go ahead and wave your application before you. This year we are test optional. We're hoping to continue to be test optional for the upcoming years. We also need a copy of your high school transcript. If you have done any dual credit, make sure you do send us a copy of your college transcript. And you can send a copy of your test course, high school transcript, and your college transcript via parchment to apply at unm.edu. This is my contact information right here. If you have any questions or any concerns, please feel free to reach out. I also speak Spanish, so I'd be happy to answer any questions in Espanol. Thank you. Great, thank you, Priscilla. All right, um, up next we have April from Texas Tech University. Hello, welcome. Hello, welcome. My name's April. I represent Texas Tech University. I'm one of the lead admissions counselors for Texas Tech. Texas Tech University is located in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, with that being said, Texas Tech is one of the largest campuses um, that we always like students to be aware of as well. With that being said, at Texas Tech University, we have a little over 40,322 students to be exact um, at Texas Tech. So we're very excited to, to announce that we've actually had a record breaking year this past year as well. We're still able to maintain a 20 to one uh, student to teacher ratio. We are a tier one research university. Our average SAT score is 1171. And also with the being said, uh, we do have 52% male, 48% female. With that also being said, just to kind of tell you a little bit about Lubbock, Texas, we're actually on the west side of Texas. So we're six hours away from Dallas, eight hours away from Houston. Uh, 2,500,000 uh, Lubbock residents live in Lubbock. 78% uh, of our new students come far, from farther than 300 miles from home, which you can see here on this map. Students attending Texas Tech, uh, just to let you also know, is one of the largest Texas cities that you might just think just as far, not farther than some of our out-of-state students that would be coming to Tech. Also, with that being said, the distance students travel to Lubbock creates a very unique college experience. Texas Tech is definitely a traditional resident, residential campus. Our student body is extremely involved in organizations, spirits, and traditions at Texas Tech. They typically do not go home on the weekend like you might expect um, from institutions that are closer to larger cities. There is an international airport in Lubbock. So it's about 10 minutes from our campus and it's it is super easy to get from campus uh, to the international airport as well. People in Lubbock love Texas Tech, lots of pride. We wear nothing but red and black, lots of school spirit at Tech as well. Also with that being said, at Texas Tech, we have 10 academic colleges, including honors as well, with over 150 different academic programs. And that's all consisting of undergrad, graduate, pre-law, and medical, all under one campus. I also like to note our Health Science Center on the campus is here on, in Lubbock Health Science Center, is home of our medical school, nursing, physical therapy, or any health profession school. I also like to note our veterinary medical um, escorts will be ready for the first class for fall 2021. That is right. We also have a veterinary school which is located in Armorello, Texas, which is two hours away from Lubbock, Texas. And it's the only second veterinary school in the state of Texas. So we're very excited to, see, to announce this as well. Also at Texas Tech, we have over 550 clubs and organizations. You are required to live on campus your first year. We have 19 different resident halls, 30 plus dining venues. We also have a rec center, which is 242 square feet. We also have lots of spirits and traditions. We are part of the Big 12. All you literally have to do is swipe your card to get into one of our athletic events. So there are four ways to, there are uh, just four things that are required uh, for you to apply it to Texas Tech. Um, so you could actually apply through Apply Texas or the Common App. We don't prefer one over the other. Um, they're just different uh, platforms. There is a $75 application fee. We do have fee waivers. We do require your official transcripts um, as well. But right now, if you want to go ahead and um, send us your unofficial transcripts, we'll definitely accept those too as well. But if you plan on attending tech, we will need your official college or your official high school transcripts as well. 
We also, uh, also uh, for official SAT and ACT scores, uh, we have moved tests optional for fall 21. Uh, so which means you do not have to supply your SAT and ACT scores to be admitted to tech. In your application, it will just simply ask you if you would like to use your test scores to be considered for admissions, or if you want, just make sure you click that you like to go test optional um, as well and submit your SAT and ACT scores um, as well for presidential scholarships. Keep in mind, you have all the way up until June 1st of your senior your year. Once we have all these documents, it takes two to four weeks for a decision to be made. We do have assured admissions as well. So uh, we have assured admissions and we have the application review. So if you make it on the top 10% of your class um, as well, if you don't meet these uh, criteria, not a problem. You'll just go through our application review meeting. We're just going to take a look at your uh, rigorous work, uh, curricular activities, history, um, letters of recommendation. Uh, so just make sure you put all those information in there too as well. Again, as I mentioned, we do have tests optional as well. So it is going to be a holistic review. Also for scholarship opportunities, that would be a Matador holistic review as well for a scholarship. Um, if you do, if you go, if you um, are denied uh, test optional, you can go ahead and sub supply us some SAT or ACT, SAT scores. So you could go ahead and we can look at your application too as well. So again, you are going to go on a holistic review. So please make sure you put all your information here. I also like to point out this is actually our tuition at Texas Tech University. Just keep in mind the asterisk that you see here is just simply um, an estimate here too as well. I also like to note if you are a non-resident and you qualify for a $1,000 competitive scholarship at Texas Tech University, that is correct. You will get the in-state tuition versus the out-of-state uh, tuition. Again, if you qualify for a $1,000 scholarship from Texas Tech University, you will receive the in-state tuition versus the out-of-state tuition as well. Thank you so much and we really appreciate your time. If you have any other questions, just let us know. Up next is Sarah from University of Oregon. Hello, hello. Oh, Earl, were you going to say something? Uh, no, um, just uh, one more reminder to our participants. Uh, um, just hang tight after uh, Sarah finishes up for closing remarks and um, I will see you soon. Sarah, off you go. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking with us. My name is Sarah Goldman, and I am with the University of Oregon. I am a Chicago-based counselor. If I were in Eugene, Oregon right now, I would be in 50-degree weather rather than whatever it is we have going on right now in Illinois. But that's all right. I'm here staying indoors, staying warm. Um, the University of Oregon is located in the city of Eugene. It is the second largest city in the great state of Oregon, just about two hours south of Portland, which is the largest city, and right in between the coast and the Cascade Mountains. So this provides students awesome opportunities like snowboarding and skiing, surfing, kayaking, hiking, kind of everything in between because of our really fantastic location. Um, Eugene is ranked as a number one green city based on factors like air quality, bike transportation, and a whole bunch of other factors. It really is a bike friendly campus. You're gonna see lots of bikes around. We have a wonderful bike share program, both in the city and right there on campus. And then there's also free public transportation for all University of Oregon students right in the city of Eugene and surrounding communities. Uh, we do get all four seasons. It never gets that cold in the winter, which I really like. But if you do start missing snow, again, you're just about an hour from those Cascade Mountains. Um, it doesn't rain all the time, contrary to what you might have heard about the great state of Oregon. It does get a little rainy in the winter, but they also have sunshine in the winter. And gosh, I miss sunshine right now. I don't know about all of you. Um, and uh, one of the really neat things about the University of Oregon is in addition to our location, we are recognized for excellence in academic and interdisciplinary research. And we really make use of our location for those research purposes. We have incredible facilities right there on the coast and in the uh, forests surrounding us. We have just about 19,000 undergraduate students and 4,000 grad students, making us a smaller tier one research university. But we really uh, pride ourselves on our geographic diversity. We have students from all 50 states on campus and just about 100 different countries. Every single class you take, you're going to have students who look like you and students who don't. And we think that that's really the best way to learn. 
We have eight different schools and colleges, um, our largest of which is our College of Arts and Sciences, which houses about 60% of our majors. This is where you're going to find things like our English program, our psychology program, biology, history, theater, things like that. Um, and then, of course, we have professional programs in our College of Business, our School of Art and Design, where you'll find our architecture and product design programs, our College of Education, our School of Journalism and Communications, our School of Music and Dance, and then we also have a law school on campus. For students uh, who are high achieving, we also offer our Clark Honors College, which is a really neat small cohort experience and maybe a great fit for students who are currently in AP classes or high honors classes. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the Clark Honors College or the CHC in just a minute. So you're sitting there thinking like, okay, I'm kind of interested. Why would I attend the University of Oregon? Again, we are that public research university, but we have a smaller student to teacher ratio. So our average class size is just about 16. Uh, and I think that that's, again, really neat. So you have all the opportunities that come with that tier one research, but that smaller experience. We are an NCAA division one athletic program, go Ducks. Um, we are a test optional institution proudly and permanently. So even for opportunities like our Clark Honors College, um, you do not need to submit test scores to be considered for that opportunity. About three quarters of our students are actively participating in research on campus. And we think that that's really neat. Uh, we have a bunch of different ranked programs. Again, I think that that's really, um, it says a lot about the type of education we're offering at the UO. And nearly a quarter of our students are gonna uh, study abroad at least once during their four years with us. Um, I think that here again, that's a really neat way to expand your college experience, potentially for an internship or potentially just for that study abroad experience to get to um, know different cultures during your four years with us. So when we're going through your application, what we consider uh, during our holistic review is your grades, of course, but not just that GPA. We're really looking at your grade trends, the classes that you've chosen to take over your four years of high school, including your senior year. Hopefully your grades are kind of inching up. Even if they're doing one of those, that's okay. We still look forward to reading your transcript. Um, but we also want to know what's going on outside the classroom. So have you spent time volunteering or are you the type of student that has to come home straight from school every day to take care of younger siblings or perhaps um, parents or grandparents? You know, however you've used your time, we want to know about it. Again, we are test optional. We look at that personal statement or other essays. Um, and we look forward to reviewing your application. This is my contact information. Again, I'm the counselor for all students from the great state of Illinois, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry, there's my, there is my uh, mic. Great, fantastic. Um, I'm looking at my, um, my watch and uh, we are close to the end of the hour here um however i want to just do a quick like 15 to 30 second round robin um <clears throat> and we can just go from michigan all the way down um and what advice would you give someone going through this process at this point um knowing that we've got some juniors and maybe even some sophomores and maybe even some ninth graders who might be listening in um, Rachel or Megan, what advice would you say? Thank you so much, Earl. I would say control what you can control at this point. We know that there is a lot out of your control right now in terms of in-person classes, extracurricular activities, even getting to know your teachers. But we know that as your admissions counselors, it's our jobs to really study your high schools and we're going to incorporate that into the review of your application in the future. So do your best, be high school kids, take care of yourselves and stay healthy and safe and focus on your academics because you only get one chance to high school today. Great job, Megan. Madeline, what's your 15 to 30 second piece of advice? Yes, well, so Megan's answer was great. I would also say um, begin early, take your time, um, find your fit. So explore lots of different campus environments that you're looking for, um, different um, 
campus programming. You might not know what you want to study as an incoming freshman, especially um, when you're just beginning your high school career. That is okay. So um, reach out to us, do virtual tours of campuses, in-person tours if you're able to. We're here to help you, um, but really just do your research. Um, it can be a fun process. And then by the time you're entering your junior, senior years, hopefully you've really narrowed it down to the schools and colleges that you wanna to apply to. Um, and there's a little bit less pressure on you at that point. Great, uh, Liz, your closing piece. Yeah, of just to add on to those great answers, really envision kind of where you see yourself um, in the next four years. So do you see yourself in a smaller one-on-one -on -one classroom or do you see yourself going to those bigger football games? Really figure out, um, you know, your best learning environment and really take that um, into consideration when you're kind of searching. Perfect. Uh, Priscilla. Yeah, so aside from all the great things the ladies already mentioned, I would definitely encourage students to start looking at scholarship opportunities early on, looking at the GPA criteria, test scores, everything that is required that we guys are able to reach that goal and be able to be eligible for those different scholarship opportunities. April. Yes, just to kind of echo what everyone else said, get to know your admissions counselors. That's the number one thing. Definitely start getting to know your admissions counselors. And Sarah. Of course, in addition to everything everyone else has said, remember that the things that you love should be what's guiding your search. So always turn it back onto yourself and think about what are my favorite classes? What have been my favorite types of experiences? And turn it back to what I love is gonna help me determine where I should go to school. Perfect, ladies, thank you. Uh, this has been a, a great uh, session um, for our viewers out there. I hope you learned a lot from uh, these wonderful admission officers. Um, a few things as you click out of this particular session, you will receive a four question questionnaire that we hope that you will uh, provide uh, Stripe scans and feedback. Um, again, as I've said throughout, sign up for as many sessions as you wish, um, and the recording will be available for, uh, for you to uh, watch uh, after this. So um, I'm gonna stop sc sharing my screen and we're all gonna wave you all goodbye. Thanks for listening. Have a great, great Monday night. Bye-bye, folks.